Hello, I am Anand Peacock from Circular Road, Baptist Chapel, Kolkata. In these dark days, a question often asked is, has God sent the virus to wake us up? Tread carefully when you ask these questions because there is a general tendency to answer life's big questions with simplified answers. Has God sent the virus? I really don't know how a loving God would do that. Certainly has woken us up and got our attention. I have not seen in my lifetime Christians be so sensitive to the needs of those around them, regardless of religion. It takes a dark experience to appreciate light. It takes moments of pain to value life. It takes an experience on the ventilator to understand the value of good health. Not that long ago, if you recollect, in Minneapolis, there was this struggle of a man crying out, I can't breathe with the force of weight pressed upon his neck. Now, breathing in and out has been a regular activity for you and me, a mundane exercise. We have never really paid attention to it until life has forced to look at it with caution. We seldom pray, thank you God for my heart beating normally, not until you and I have a stent insert within us. I wonder if you and I pray, God, thank you that my kidneys are functioning normally, not until you and I are placed on a dialysis machine. It takes pain for us to appreciate what we once have taken for granted. Do you wake up each morning and thank God, thank you, I don't have a fever or even a common cold this morning. I'm sure the past two years have made you appreciate these smaller things which we otherwise would have taken for granted. And it is probably these dark days that have forced us to cry out to Jesus, my God, my God, why have you forsaken us? In the book of Acts chapter 27, while they are about to set sail, Paul warns not to set out at sea, but they ignore him. You know, he's after all a tent maker. Let's rather listen to the captain or the pilot of the ship. They set sail. Notice what happens next. They run into a terrible storm and they had to throw all the cargo overboard. They lost the cargo in the storm. They lost the cargo before they lost the ship. Cargo represents what is valuable to us. Storms don't always sink our ships first. They take the cargo, that which is valuable to us. Before our relationships are taken, the cargo is taken first. Before our partnership sinks, the cargo is taken. Trust is taken. Hope is taken. Our faith in the human race is taken. How has it been for you for the past two years? Has your faith in humanity been restored or has it been taken? Now, how can I make sense of all of this in these very dark days? To conclude, may I take you back to Simon of Sidene. As Jesus was walking with that heavy cross, Simon was forced to carry a cross that he wasn't supposed to. And here he had his two boys, Rufus and Alexander, look at their dad carry the burden of an unjust cross. You know, if he didn't carry that cross, the Romans would have put that cross, that weight on his boys. Probably the only thing that kept Simon going was the image of Jesus up in front. The only visible sight was Jesus in front. And that is what kept him going, carrying the load of a cross that he wasn't meant to carry. Do you also carry an unjust cross? I'm sure. Jesus himself carried the weight of an unjust cross. Later on in Romans chapter 16, when Paul is greeting all the elders, Rufus is standing in the midst of a pagan, unjust culture. And Paul says, give Rufus a hug. This same Rufus who saw his dad carry the weight of an unjust cross was standing amidst a pagan culture to testify that Jesus is Lord. Friends, important that you and I carry our cross as well because there are our Rufuses and Alexanders watching. So may I encourage you, even as I close, carry your crosses because the only thing that should keep you and me going is the 
sight of our Jesus up in front. Our Rufuses and Alexanders are watching how we carry them. No sickness, no death, no COVID, no virus, no mask, no ventilator can separate me from the love of God. Even as I close, may I remind you of these beautiful words I heard from a speaker last year. He said that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yet that valley will not walk through me. Stay strong.